And today we got Spider-Man PS5 versus Arkham Batman. Now, warning, there will be spoilers in this discussion or debate in this live. So, if you don't want to be spoiled to Marvel Spider-Man 2, or even Arkham Batman, Arkham Knight, whatever, even though the game's been out for eight years, either way, either way, this live will have spoilers. So, just letting y'all know, there will be spoilers in this live. Just going forward, letting you know. There will be spoilers in this live. Now, let's get into it. Spider-Man PS5 versus the Arkham Batman. And also, before we go also any further, um, the live uh, guest requests are open. So let's get this debate going, this discussion going. Let's go crazy with it. Let's talk about it. Spider-Man PS5 versus the Arkham Batman. Let's do it. Let's do it, yo. Let's do it. Let's get to it. Join my live, get on the guest request, send me a guest request, let's get into this, let's debate this, Spider-Man PS5 versus the Arkham Batman. And the reason why I'm only doing this, because originally I was going to do, they destroyed Peter's character in the game. Okay, how, okay, explain to me how does the Spider-Man 2 game destroy the character Peter? Please explain to me. Go ahead, explain it to me. How does Spider-Man 2, to push Miles ahead of him? Okay, first of all, Miles Morales is Spider-Man. That is first and foremost. And they weren't pushing Miles. Anything, it was still Peter's story. Miles was just a part of it. To say that is ridiculous. How could you say that, oh, pushing Miles ahead of him? Seriously? Seriously? But you know what? I'm going to save that debate or discussions, not even debate. Miles is Spider Man. Peter's a Spider Man. It would be. It wouldn't make. It wouldn't make any sense to have no story for Miles in Spider Man Two, when we've had him in the first Spider Man game and his own solo little game DLC. It wouldn't make any sense. Okay, how's Batman winning? Please explain to me how's Batman beating Exomniac Spider Man PS Five. Please tell me. Explain to me. Just don't say it. Explain to me. How was he getting destroyed? Because I could remember he he took down uh, Lizard. He took down Lizard. He defeated Wrath or Ray, whatever you want to call it. And he destroyed Venom. Miles and Peter destroyed Venom. My, Peter wasn't. Peter wasn't weakened in the game. That's just a dumb uh, take. That, that's a dull take. Seriously. Okay, with prep time, even I'm saying even with prep time, even with prep time, Peter destroys Batman. This isn't a fight. How am I blind? How am I blind? You have not given me actually good evidence or pointing out how... They pushed Miles over Peter. Please tell me. Because Miles was more of a side story. Peter was the main story. That, has, that was very in your face with the whole game. You're, you just don't like Miles Morales as a character. That's the, exact, the only reason why you would say that. That's not being blind. Batman does not slam. Please tell me how does Batman slam. We ain't talking about now, if we're, if we're talking story, I might lean towards that. Okay, for, before we go any further, if you want to join in this discussion, please, the guest requests are open. So please, join with me. Let's have this discussion, please. But uh, yeah. How is Batman's game better than the past three Spider-Man games? Please explain to me how... You have, okay, I can understand if you want to make that debate with Arkham Knight, but Arkham City and Arkham, Arkham Asylum is not that easy. Hold on, we're cool. Having Arkham City or Asylum compared to the first two Spider Man games, when I say first two, I'm talking just the main two, not Miles. How is that compared to Arkham and City when the, I wouldn't even compare those two 
because they're two different types of, it's like apples and oranges. It's like, it's hard to compare the two. Now we're talking Arkham Knight. Yeah, I can understand because a lot, there's a lot of similarities between both story-wise, gameplay-wise, and whatnot. To say that Arkham, the Arkham series, or at least the first two Arkham games are better than the past first two Spider-Man games is a bit biased, in my opinion. I, but. I, think, I think they are better solely just because of story-wise. If we're talking gameplay, Spider-Man clears. But Arkham Batman I I has a well diverse story that just isn't really seen that much in the Spider-Man games. Mm. But I could definitely see how you could say gameplay-wise, because, I mean, it looks beautiful. We can't lie about that. Like, all the Arkham's kind of look dull, especially City and Asylum, especially Asylum. But um, as far as story-wise, I think it just it clears. <laughs> yeah, I, I see that angle. And to be honest with you, when it comes to story-wise, that's a little bit more a different conversation. Because, like, when it comes to Arkham, Asylum maybe may not touch that, even though it's a great game. Don't get me wrong. I love the Arkham series. I love it. You know, I, I even argue Arkham Origins has a really great story as well. But when we're talking story-wise, yeah, I can see that. But um, I think going forward, I w- I'm very interested in seeing what they're going to do with the third game. Because I think that's when we can have that con- discussion when it comes to story. But I think, again, when it comes to story things... Batman is a more darker character, and his stories are more darker. Not to say Spider-Man hasn't dived into darker toned stories, but to compare the two, it's really hard when it comes to story, you know, comparing stories because Spider-Man is more, not lighter story, but it's it's like night and day. You know, it's it's hard to compare the two, but but I see where you're going with that. I I, I agree. I think when it comes to Arkham, that's why I say Arkham Knight is a better game to use as an as a discussion because the story itself is more compelling more interesting it has more uh thrills to it it has you ha- it touches all the emotional you know beats now gameplay wise that's a different discussion that's a different discussion oh yeah gameplay wise i mean arkham asylum and arkham city both had like its fair share of um bugs i mean all the arkham games did they were kind of really bad pre-patch for most of them but um i think if if spider-man if the the spider-man series comes out with another game and it has a more i don't know i'm looking for a more developed story and maybe even a storyline kind of like how we've seen in arkham origins where we had batman going against basically one of every single most famous villain in his books and comics and stuff like that then that would be pretty cool and honestly that would make me more of a fan of spider-man than the arkham games Mm. yeah and you know mm, that's interesting that that's interesting now i would love to see what they do with wolverine because i feel like that might be a more better comparison comparison between arkham and wolverine because wolverine has way more darker stories between you know, compared to Spider-Man. Again, Spider-Man has some dark stories, and they do touch on that in Spider-Man 2 with Craven Last Hunt and um, King in Black, which is more of a Venom or symbiote story, but still, um, you know, they do touch on that. I do wish the only critique I have for Spider-Man 2, and I'm going to save this for the spoiler discussion for tomorrow because we're going to have a big live stream tomorrow for that. Um, one of my biggest critiques to set that up is that I do feel like they were jam packing way too much stories from past runs, which I, I I love the fact that they're paying homage to that, but at the same time, it did feel like we're we're kind of were going to A to B. It was kind of just, you know, again, I love Spider Man 2. I love the story. I don't, don't get me wrong, but I could see where sometimes the pacing could be a little weird at times. Like, you know, one moment we're you know, fighting hordes of symbiotes and then the next moment we're just sitting down with this you know back and forth between a character and that's fine and all but i don't know i just i felt more the only compelling part i felt in that story for spider-man 2 was between peter and harry you know i almost felt it a little bit with mj and peter between that whole scream fight but it i didn't now the tension with between miles and peter 
there was hints of that, but it wasn't really, you know, really dived into much to really make me feel some, you know, compelling emotions for the story. But I'm going to save that for tomorrow. But back to Spider-Man PS5 and versus Arkham Batman. Now, we're talking story-wise, great debate. Great, you know, I think Arkham, I think when it comes to story, why I think Arkham still takes that, but if we're talking just good old fashioned back and forth fight between Spider-Man PS4 and Arkham Batman, I truly think Spider-Man wins that even with prep time because, you know, <clears throat> Spider-Man has feats as well. I mean, yes, he didn't. I if you will look back the second game, yeah, he didn't have a lot of feats, but in the first game he had a lot of feats, a lot of feats. He took on the Sinister Six. If Batman took on the Sinister Sticks, he would have not survived. That's just a fact. He wouldn't. I truly would think he would. Just based on, and when I say that, I'm basing it from the games. If we're going to talk about comics, that's a different conversation. But this is truly just based on the game and what we've seen so far and the comics as well that are attached to that. And the thing is, honestly, they downscaled Batman so much in the games that... I could see why you make that argument because I mean he's just he's just plain old Batman in the Arkham games for the most part. I mean he doesn't have huge feats. I mean we have that huge fight at the end of um, Arkham Asylum when he beats uh, Joker when he's all juiced up and all that. And uh, God, what was the other one? Clayface, I think it was in City, right? Towards the end, mm, of- yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was city. Yeah. And obviously the whole Scarecrow thing and um, the whole Jason Todd storyline with um, Arkham Knight and how he was able to not only beat uh, Red Hood, but he was also able to absolutely destroy Scarecrow. But I think that was a little bit anticlimactic because Scarecrow to me has always been a weak character because all he relies on is obviously his fear toxin. So I could see how you could say Spider-Man – definitely slaps him because i mean yeah like i said like if you look at the comics for batman like obviously the comics are completely different but if you look at the comics he has so much more feats and with prep time and all that jazz like he can do so much more but in the games they have to kind of dole him down for the sake of gameplay so he's not too overpowered which is the only downside okay for the someone that said that Batman slaps Peter or Spider-Man because of prep time. We're not taking into account that also Spider-Man has that prep time too. I mean, at the end of Spider-Man 1, you know, he went to back to the lab and cooked him up a suit that was able for him to take a better, more, I'm, I don't know, because the suit really didn't do much as in like defeating Doc Ock because I truly think even without that suit, he still would have done what he'd done, but... Peter also has prep time. He's very smart and intelligent, just like Bruce Wayne. And yeah, he I think the prep time, you know, stance, yeah, that might work in the comics, but in this in this conversation and the games, what's been seen so far, both of them but here's the thing, even with the Batman stuff, a lot of that wasn't prep time. A lot of that was just a lot of reactionary because in the situation between Arkham, Solemn, and City, he was in a situation where he couldn't get into himself out of. Now, Arkham Origins and Arkham Knight is a different story because he had outside help. Now, granted, he had Oracle throughout the trilogy, but when it comes to like actual prep time, going back to like the Batcave or whatnot, that wasn't really present except for Arkham um, Asylum, I believe, was the... What was that? I think it was Arkham Asylum, right? Where he had the Batcave. And I uh, can't remember. Yeah, yeah, it was. I think. was. I think that's actually... I can't even think. I mean, I think in Origins, he's in the Batcave a little bit, but... Yeah. In the other games, he's just out. Because, like, technically, I think the storyline, like, it's just... It's a continuous night, almost. Now, if, if Arkham Origins didn't exist, I would give it to you if he was, like, creating the gadgets as he went. But as it was established in Arkham Origins, 
those gadgets were already made. So they weren't in prep time of defeating a certain villain, and that's never been established in any of the fights. Um, you know, it, none of his gadgets actually did damage. Now, granted, if you want to use the Joker fight at the end of Arkham Asylum, that's cool, even though I think that was a complete joke, but no pun intended. But s seriously, it's just, uh, I mean, he, yes, Batman can have prep time, but he hasn't really shown, even if he has had prep time, he has been successful with prep time. Because a lot of people, when they say that, they're thinking about the comics, but this isn't the comics, this is the game, and what, what was given to us throughout the game. And there has not been a time where, besides um, Arkham Knight, has been a time where he actually sat down and had prep time about taking down a certain villain, you know. And, you know, even with Spider-Man, he has had prep time as well, which was shown at the first game as well, at the end of the first game. For joke purposes, uh, I still think Batman could also clear because uh, the Riddler trophies that he has to go through. I mean, I don't see I don't see Peter Parker doing that. Me personally. Yeah, the joke, <laughs> the Riddler joke, the tro the Riddler trophies are just a <laughs> pain in the ass. But uh, yeah, the Riddler Riddler trophies. Mm, yeah, but if this was a versus between Spider-Man and the Riddler, that would be a different... Because Batman doesn't have the mentality of the Riddler. Now, he can outsmart the Riddler, but, you know, this isn't a factor of... But you also got Spider-Senses. You also, you know, he's Spider-Man, the PS4, Spider-Man or PS5 is very tactical as well. So... It would be a very interesting seeing the mindset of both characters and seeing how they will use their intelligence against each other. It would be very interesting because I feel like there has been both times, at least once, they have shown that when it comes to tac tactical fights and using their intelligence, Peter and Batman have shown that multiple times. But ba again, to say Batman solos... That's you're going up. Okay, let me put it this way: If we replace Spider-Man with and put Batman in the scenario that Spider-Man was in in the first game with broken bones, taking on active villains more at more than one, two, because he he took on Vulture and Electro at once. He took on Rhino and Scorpion at once, and he defeated both with broken bones. Also dealing with the mentality of what's been going on with Doc Ock. Then he takes on Mr. Negative. Then he takes on Doc Ock all in one night. All in one night. Now you could say, well, look at the past three games. They were individual fights. They were never, like, correct me if I'm wrong, They're, the past three fights, like the past three games, every fight was kind of like, you know, one boss fight after another boss fight. It was never two Boss, bosses fighting, you know, fighting two bosses at once, if that makes any sense. But, my question is to you, how is Batman going to touch Spider-Man? He's not going to touch Spider-Man. You know, granted, ba now Batman does have reflexes and can dodge really well. But again, you got to take in the spider senses, you know, you got to take that into account. So that's not, mm -mm, no, the Batman cannot, even in the comics, Batman cannot go up against his spider senses. That's just common knowledge. Yeah. So I was going to bring up earlier, like with like, say, say Batman did have prep time. You found out about Spider-Man found out he was Peter Parker. I don't think it's in Batman's character to like go for Peter's loved ones and hold them captive or whatever or threaten them so all batman could really do is i guess like come up with a cure or find out with like, or not like a cure but like a dampener for his powers or other than that like things to combobulate him like maybe like a like a smoke screen or, or like a noise like whatever whatever batman uses like those loud noise things that always like hurts uh certain enemies ears but then with those mm -hmm. cases 
uh, Peter has the spider senses to dodge any like serum or anything that would come at him from Batman. If he throws a smoke screen, spider sense will be in his favor. If he throws down anything that would disorient him, he can easily swing away. And then other than that, I don't think Batman could necessarily land heavy blows onto Spider-Man to get him down. Or like, yeah, Batman does have the reflexes, uh, but in the in the PS in the PlayStation games, Spider-Man has so many abilities where there is an area of an effect where, yeah, Batman could grapple away here or there, but how long is that really going to benefit him in the long run? Overload his senses, yes, he did. But <sighs> when did he overload his senses? I don't remember. Did they do that? When did he overload? Because he fought. Because he only fought him once, I think. Between yeah, Spider Man, I can really think is with the bells. But that's not senses, though. That yeah, was that, symbi- that, that was not- yeah, that was a symbiote. Nah, I mean, granted, Grave Craven was no easy fight. I mean, I can tell you firsthand, fighting playing that game, I, uh, he was the worst boss fight. Uh, he was the worst one. But um, but still, <laughs> even without the symbiote, now without the symbiote suit, different conversation. Um, but also, I truly believe, I think Spider-Man would have still taken down Craven if he managed to survive the first fight. Because he would come back with, again, like how he did with Doc Ock. He also, like I said earlier, Spider-Man has been shown that he can be very resourceful when it comes to his own prep time. And if I'm, if we're going to say Batman defeats Spider-Man with prep time, well, then Spider-Man gets prep time. And if Spider-Man gets prep time, there is no way in hell Batman is defeating Spider-Man. But even without the prep time, Spider-Man still a dog's Batman. It's not even, I mean... If, if Batman, like again, if Batman had to take on Spider-Man villains, like from the first game or even the second game, <laughs> you telling me that he's going to survive that? No, he's not. I mean, yeah, he can have prep time all he wants, but the only person I see he can probably take down is like Vulture. Mm, maybe may, that's a stretch, but Shocker. Uh, mm, let's see. Who else could he? Maybe Rhino. Maybe, but that's that's a that's a very close fight there. But because there is multiple ways you could take down Rhino if you're a bad man. But like Electro, Doc Ock, maybe, maybe. But again, that that solely again, Batman not surviving this fight. Even if he didn't have prep time, he, if he didn't have prep time, maybe he could have survived some fights, but he would not survive any of those fights if it was just all based on reactionary, which a lot of his games, Arkham City, Asylum, Asylum City and a Night, a lot of that was without prep time. That was a lot of reactionary stuff, the tools that he already had. Now, Arkham Knight, there was moments, yes, he did have a little prep time and origins as well. But again, origins sets up that all the gadgets he's had before he's been had, you know, then Spider-Man can look at that Darth Vader solos. <laughs> um, that will be an interesting conversation. If Darth Vader can solo Batman or Spider-Man or both. I don't, mm, that's, that's interesting. I don't know. I mean, I think he'd always use the force. I can see that. Let's see. Comic Batman does not next Spider-Man. I'm sorry, he does not. That's a whole nother debate. Don't make me get some of my comic book readers up in here. I will. I'll, I'll take, we'll tear that apart. Now, it's a 50-50, yes, I give it to you. Yes, it's 50-50, but come on. Seriously? Now, I don't know. If you want to use the recent run of Spider-Man, maybe. But 
I'll have to see the next issue and how he goes forward with that because that would be interesting. Because if it was the past issues, if we're talking recent issues, and we used him with the, the goblin spirit, he, he Batman and I walking away from that. Too many Batman comics? Well, depends on... Well, if you... The, when we talk about comic book debates, we try to use the recent, the recent stuff. We don't go... You can go back... If you want to go back and use whatever, then that's a whole other debate and conversation. But if we're talking, to like, battle, like death battles or versus battles or whatever, you got to use current. Current is the only way you can have a very intelligent... Um, not intelligent, but a very... You, you'll know your answer, you know, it's like some issues that like they're like this, this whole thing now with the flash stuff going on right now between the the whole Wally West fat flash and how people are saying that, you know, he can take on the Justice League and whatnot now. But, you know, you know, obviously they have pointed out that that's not the case, but that's go to Phil and. Um, Melly, another combo creator, he they do a great job explaining that. I'll leave that to them. But yeah, current movie Spidey wins. Um, so you're talking about Tom against Bat? Which Batman are we talking about? Because if we're talking current Batman, current Spider Man, which is the Batman, Robert Pattinson, and Tom Holland. I would give it to Tom, the last Batman movie. Yeah, Robert Patterson. Um, yeah. Now, if we're talking, you know, Ben Affleck, even though, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to sit here and try to defend Ben Affleck Batman. I'm not. But um, <laughs> I'm not getting into that can of worms. Uh, but Christian Bale, I think he, I think Tom could defeat Christian Bale, maybe. Yeah, Tom, I think Tom, when it comes to Christian Bale, that's interesting. That's an interesting conversation. That's an interesting conversation because if the bat, because the only Batman I can see really go toe-to-toe with the Spider-Man, any of the live-action Spider-Man, it's, Maybe Ben Affleck, but then that's a whole nother conversation because then you're bringing in Toby and Andrew. And mm, now, if it's Toby and Andrew, Toby, I mean, Toby alone and Andrew alone would decimate most of the ba- live action Batman stuff. Live, live action, though. Let me specify live action. Yeah. Hey, Lee, I see you in this live, man. How come you're not joining the live? Were you at work or something? Yeah, uh, but yeah, the Arkham Batman and the Spider-Man PS5, I, I truly think, I mean, it's really not a debate. It really isn't. The only reason I'm bringing this up is because I want to hear other people's perspectives about it because me personally, I just, well, you've played the games, bro. <laughs> what are we talking about? Um. Yeah, so I just, you know, I would love to see other perspectives and saying what now the other guy that was in here, I love his perspective when it comes to stories wise. I think Batman still holds that, but that's only going to be held to a st- held there right now until we get into the third game. Cause the third game will be interesting in seeing what the, cause I'm not using the miles game. Cause that's not fair because like, it's like saying, cause like there hasn't been a spinoff, Arkham Batman game, well, minus the Suicide Squad stuff, but, um, yeah. Hold on, I got a request. All right. Personally, I well, think... Well, it's about uh, time one of my friends show up. It's about personally, time. I think, personally, I think Christian Bale, uh, Batman, will take Tom Holland, Spider-Man. Okay, how do you think that? I mean, what? What? Look at that Batman! Look at that Batman! He's been able to overcome anything. And he, well, he he got he barely survived Bane fight, the Bane fight. And 
Joker. You can't really use Joker because that's not. I mean, Spider Man could take down Joker easily. Um, what feats does Batman have? The Christian Bale. Like who? Who is he? Who is he defeated? See, this is why I didn't want to come on mm-hmm. here. You was gonna make me look like a fool. I'm not looking. I'm just asking. It's not. I'm not like this. Ain't you no. Know, hey, I'm just trying to have a conversation. That's all. I don't know. I'm being biased. Uh, yep. He's my favorite Batman. So. Well, at least you're honest. That's fun. I mean, some people are not honest about that. Some people will say because they think it's true, but you're honest. I respect that. But yeah, Tom, but in the reality, Tom definitely, he destroys um, Christian Bale's Batman. That's not even, yeah, but, you know, but that, that's no just to you. I respect that answer. I res- at least you're being honest about it. I respect that 100%. I respect anybody that says, look, man, it's just, it's a biased opinion. This is how I feel. I was like, that's cool, bro. That's cool. As long as you're not going out here and telling people that's the, that's, that's the truth, that's fine. As long as you establish that it's a biased stance, then that's cool. Just like this whole conversation between Spider-Man PS5 and Arkham Batman is that I think if we look at the stats and the feats and now, if we're talking story, yes, I give it to Arkham still. Even though, don't get me wrong, I love the first two Spider-Man games, story-wise. But if we're talking just fighting-wise, yeah, first off, Spider-Man Senses. Yeah, Spider-Man Senses alone. Hold on, we got a guest coming in. We got another guest. But, um, yeah, I mean... Fighting wise, I think Spider Man takes Batman. Well, I think you know my uh, live action ranking on the Batmans. Say what? I said, I think you know my live action ranking on the Batmans anyway. Let me try to guess. Okay, let's, let's list them out. You have Michael Keaton, um, Kilmore, and. Uh, George Clooney, Christian Bale, Ben Affleck, Robert Pattinson. I and mean, I'm not using, I'm not going to bring in the Gotham Bruce Wayne because that doesn't count because he really wasn't Batman. He was Bruce Wayne. But yeah. But I think I would say, is Christian Bale your first? Yep. Okay, Christian Bale. Your second, Michael Keaton? Pattinson. Pattinson, Pattinson. Okay. Then third is Michael Keaton, right? Yep. And now this is interesting. George Clooney or Ben Affleck? Ben Affleck. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> now, as much as I don't like Batman and Robin, I have to say he does. He is a he's he's a somewhat good Bruce Wayne. But Batman and the movie, the, no, no. That's the only good thing I'll say about that movie. I think, I think the worst one in there was Arnold. Yeah, yeah. Arnold was, yeah. The whole <laughs> he's he's what killed the he's, dinosaurs. Yeah, I say. I like Batman more, but he's just not touching either Spider Man. Yeah, I respect that. See. I'm not trying when I say Batman versus Spider-Man when it comes to the games, I'm not trying to diminish anyone's love for those any of the characters or Batman. Because I complete like the, guy, the other guy I was in here, like I completely agree with him. I think when it comes to story wise, I do think it's more compelling. But again, like I pointed out earlier, you're comparing night and day. You know, Spider-Man's day and Batman's night. Like it's com- two completely different. Now I think Spider-Man two dabbles in that a little bit but uh, well, it's Spider- just well, yeah, Spider-Man will come out anytime you don't care if it's day or night now Batman there's I been occasions to come out at night I mean out out at day oh my god I don't mean literally I mean like comparing it's like comparing like um I don't know I'm trying to use an example here it's like using uh let's see it's like it's like comparing The Office with Sons of Anarchy. Two completely different shows. Two well, completely different shows. 
Office is comedy and SOA is drama. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, well, I'm saying like the feel of those two shows are differently because the Office is lighthearted. The Sons of Anarchy is more dramatic, more darker of a story. Same for Batman, Spider-Man. Spider-Man is more lighthearted. Yes, it has darker moments, but it's, you know, compared to Batman, Batman is just throughout more of a mental dark dwelling you know story it's um it's beethoven type storytelling the day you have a co- a podcast about sons of anarchy i'm definitely there make sure i'm available yeah well i mean there's not a lot of well, sons of anarchy fans in the community right now or at least in my my spot but maybe in your life i'm sure you have some people and your 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 circle that ha- are like fans of that. I'm trying to get more people into it. Yep. But yeah, pretty much everything else. The, they both have relative speed and both. Yeah, Spider Man outscales. No, don't get me wrong. I think you know when when I, like if we're talking gameplay, I think when it comes to fighting, I think Batman still steals that when it comes to gameplay um well when i say gameplay i mean like fighting like combat like i think you know him fighting multiple hordes of villains or uh, henchmen and the way he does that and how fluid it is especially in arkham knight it's still it's still unmatched i haven't seen a game to do that you know don't get me wrong i love the fighting system in spider-man one and two or even in miles but Compare that to Arkham Knight's fighting system, combat system, and even dodging is is a still unmatched. I, I wish Insomniac would apply that and maybe in the third game a little bit more. I think they're focused more on the flying aspect, which is cool. It's a Spider-Man game. Yeah, I have to give the combat to Arkham. My brother Bro, said... Go ahead. I'm sorry. My brother said they're definitely coming out with the third game. Oh yeah, they're coming out with the third game. They're also is he finished the game? Oh yeah, he's finished the game. I think he's one hundred percent through all the side stuff as well. So he he platinumed the game. I think so. I'll 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 ask him. Um, I, I'll tell you this. He told me that Metal Gear is probably is going to have to wait uh, before playing it because I'm going to want to finish uh, all Spider Man and then. The day it, the day Metal Gear came out, he um he started playing it because he was already done. So I'm pretty sure everything's all done. Yeah. 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 I, mm, yeah. The third game. I really don't want to discuss the third game yet because that's saved for tomorrow. Unless, are you going to be on live tomorrow? Me? Or you have to work. Yeah. I have to work 10 to 5 tomorrow. All right. Well, I'll speak about it here, but I, I'm going to, there is going to be a big spoiler discussion tomorrow, guys. Just letting y'all know. I um, have a lot of people coming on tomorrow. Um, we're going to have a big spoiler discussion for Marvel Spider Man 2. But um, yeah. Uh, the third game. Yeah, they're definitely set up the third game between Carnage, Chameleon, and um, Green Goblin. I mean, everything's set up there. But, yeah. See, this what this was why it wasn't a good idea for me to come in here because I always end up changing the subject. You're fine, bro. I mean, happens all the time on the live stream on my on the episode of uh, Cinema Fan Podcast. Like we have the main subject, but we definitely go into other um, conversations and subjects all the time. So, no, you good, bro? You good? You want to add anything, Matt? Um, uh, I was gonna let him finish. Go ahead, Phil. And by the way, uh, five is Kilmer, six is Clooney. Just for the fact that uh, I just can't get with uh, I'm drawing a blank here. What? Uh, West Adam West. Mm-hmm. I, I just can't d- get down with Adam West Batman for the fact that I grew up with Batman's serious like meant to be taken serious and that 60s batman show was i think more meant to be a comedy than anything (laughs) 
It was good. Go ahead, Matt. Oh, uh, so I don't wanted to say that. Um, believe that the uh, the Spider Man PS Five game took a lot of uh, notes from combat from the Arkham games. So without the Arkham games, the uh, the combat system in, in Spider Man PS Five probably wouldn't be the same. Uh, the traversal, I would say, in Spider Man PS Five is better than. Sorry, it was a motorcycle. Um, the traversal in PS5 is much better than uh, the the gliding system in uh, the Arkhamverse. It's just more fun. Like you can sit there and just swing through the city in Spider-Man PS5 and PS4. Yeah, I I agree. They definitely took some notes from the the Arkham stuff and the Batman to combat. Or I would say even the gliding system a little bit from Arkham Knight. They definitely took some notes, but they definitely evolved it to a point where you know comparing the two spider-man definitely takes it but um you know i'm i'm very interested to see what they do in the third game because that's the only thing i have an issue with the second game because the second game is that they did so much like what can you do with the third game are we going to wait until the ps6 comes out to do the third game or we're just going to uh do a sequel you know in for the ps5 so I know they have Wolverine, and if you, like I was saying earlier, um, if you have completed the game, Spider-Man 2, um, they also have Cindy Moon. So me personally, I think they're going to do a sequel to the Miles Morales stuff and set up Cindy Moon through that since they set her up through Miles. So uh, that's a possibility. So And then we can uh, also get a spinoff Cindy Moon game as well. Uh, I, I'm not going to say. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think whenever Beyond the Spider-Verse comes out, that's when we get our third game. Because remember, 2018, um, Into the Spider-Verse came out, and the first Spider-Man came out, a Spider-Man game. And then this year, Across the Spider-Verse came out, and then <laughs> Spider-Man 2 came out. Is, do you see a pattern there? The turnover is not going to work that way, though. Yeah. Because you got the actor strike going on right now. We don't know when that's ever going to see a conclusion. I know they're having meetings right now, but hopefully. But, but also, like, um, the animation team was already, like, underway making Across the Spider-Verse. Like, they were they were working on it, like, immediately after they finished. Uh, or be, working on Beyond the Spider-Verse after Across the Spider-Verse. Well, from what I've heard, uh, Haley Steinfeld hasn't recorded any lines for Gwen yet, so. That, that, there, there's also the fact that um, the studio that was producing the animation, uh, the, the, the artists were under terrible conditions oh, because of forcing product out. Yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> I'm going to take all. Yeah. All right. All right. Enjoy your night, man. In here. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. Mm hmm. Completely forgot what I was saying. <laughs> completely forgot what I was saying. Uh, I completely forgot what I was saying. Yeah, actor strike. Yeah, I mean, from what I understand, for Spider Verse, the movie, the third one, Beyond Spider Verse, they they were beginning production for that. I mean, they I mean, they have already started production for the third game because originally it was just a big movie that we're making. Because if you if you <laughs> listen to the director commentary for the first movie through Blu-ray, because I collect Blu-rays and 4Ks. Yep. Um, there is a comment where they have about, you know, them working on the the first the across the Spider Verse and Beyond the Spider Verse, which was going to be a two parter originally, but they were working on that film. But they also were working on a spin off movie as well, but I don't know if they're still gonna go through it, is having like a Spider Woman verse film as well. But yeah. But I'm not confirming anything because a lot changes because that, that commentary was recorded you know, before the pandemic, so I don't know. Things have changed. Supposedly, that, so. supposedly they're making a Madam Web uh, TV show. That was yeah. a movie. 
Yeah, I thought it was a movie too at first, but every time I look at casting options, it seems to be for a TV show. Oh. No, it's a movie. It's supposed to be released in February. The uh, yeah, it's supposed to be a movie. It's gonna have uh, that chick from Fifty Shades of Grey in it. I'm hoping. It's be mad and wet. Dakota Johnson. Yeah. I'm hoping yeah. so because I ain't gonna lie. Going with a TV show again, I can't do another TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that wouldn't be Disney Plus. That would be uh, that would be a Sony mm, show. So it'd probably be on Amazon. I think it would be Netflix actually, because they have a really? deal with Netflix. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, The Witcher and everything. Yeah, that's why a lot of these Spider-Man movies are now just going to Disney Plus because they have a year deal with Netflix, and once that's over with, then they go to Disney Plus. So no. <laughs> that's why you still got like Amazing Spider-Man on Netflix. Hmm. I know Spider-Man Far From Home is supposed to go to Disney Plus in November. I think November 3rd, I believe. Man, that movie is tough. That's a whole nother... I would love to have that discussion. (laughs) That's the one of the things I've come to really learn on this app, you know, in the past three years. The love for... Uh, Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man 3, and the love for Spider-Man Far From Home. Because, you know, forever before TikTok, I've always heard from people that they didn't care for, they didn't like Spider-Man 3, and they didn't care for Spider-Man Far From Home. But being on this app and on even on Twitter, aka X, uh, there has been just this big following love for both films. I I love it. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. See what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. Like Mysterio was just—he was just a great. They the way they did—they they did Mysterio. He was one of the final great villains in the in, in the series. The rest of the villains, as of currently, have been just okay. You didn't like uh, what's his name? Uh, from the Guardians Three, the the evolutionary or a high yeah. evolutionary? Yeah, he was trash. He was trash. He, he was <laughs> he was good. I think I think if they took more time and built him up, him and Kang, I think if they were built up for longer, they'd be better villains. I didn't really care for Kang in the uh, Ant Man three. I don't. I mean, I didn't dislike him, but I didn't this. care for him. That makes sense though, because think about it. You're you're introducing what we know is going to be the big bad, and then you kill him off in the exact same movie. You don't do any build up. You don't do any plot inducing. Nothing. No, you kill him off in the exact same movie you introduced him in. And like like yeah, Marvel does yeah, in every in one of their movies. I mean, you can even <laughs> say, oh, well, they introduced him in Loki and they killed him in Ant-Man. They killed him when they introduced him in Loki, too. Well, they, they're, that's the great thing about Kane. I think Kane, specifically as a character, is a little bit different compared to all the other villains. Yep. I see what you mean, because, you know, when they killed Hela, uh, pretty much every villain they have had, they have basically unalived but when it comes to king i think it's a different conversation because there is that's the story of that's the thing about king is that there's multiple kings you know it's kind of hard to keep one king and you gotta explain yeah you gotta explain the all the other kings then because if you keep multiverse shit yeah real multiverse shit You gotta establish that there is multiple kings, which I think Victor Timely and Loki, which is supposed to the new episode comes out today. I, well, I got a question: Is um, this like a fight in the you know background? Mm-hmm. Is, oh, is this like a Spider-Man fight? Versus Batman? Yeah, like is that like in a fight or like in the story? Um, well, it, it I my my main intentions were a fight, but um, people have had mm-hmm. I've had discussions about the story as well. I ain't gonna lie to you. I haven't played Spider Man Two yet, so I I don't know. And I've been avoiding spoilers, so like I seen spoiler warning, so I was open to spoilers. But like I've been avoiding them, so I don't know who's in that game. All I know is it's Craven and Venom. I just well, thought even... it was a discussion about the dip, like which game is better or which game series is better. <laughs> That's what I thought it was. It could be Not that. It was fighting really each other. Oh, it's really a for the most basic reason, and that's because the fighting style transferred over to Marvel Spider. Yeah, I mean, it's really a, it could be anything. That's what the whole point was. Um, could be a fight. It could be game comparing games and whatnot. But um, yeah, Batman, Batman overall better character. 
over all are we talking about game wise yeah and arkham batman versus like the spider-man batman i mean i'll be stupid versus the spider-man game there it is i think I, i'd prefer like arkham batman yeah that's understandable all right is it do you do you have is it more of a bias stance or more of a more you know you have the 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 facts to bring that the back well up? it's not just like i don't like the batman himself but i like the arkham games like the way that the arkham games portray how fucked up that 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 the like gotham is like i don't know if y'all know who uh what's his name Pigman or whatever dr pig mm-hmm. professor pig. pig professor yeah. pig that's his name yeah like he he talks about his son and the fact that like his the, the way he treated his son's mother like i don't know if y'all ever like played through that storyline crazy oh, yeah. but it, it's like really it brings depth to the characters like i've never seen before but then like this batman's not afraid to murk people like that <laughs> what no i gotta murk bat I, I, I gotta murk the joker cool i'll do it and then mm-hmm. even when he was brought back in the comic like temporarily it was like no nah, you should probably kill joker for like the the, the betterment of everybody to another batman that's crazy He's really. Oh, you're talking about the recent bro. comic stuff. You said what? You talking about the recent comic stuff where the they traveled the Batman verse and they yep. found um, Arkham Batman. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, but like all in all, that and Arkham City is my favorite like superhero game. It's yeah, well, an overall comes- great game. It's a great game. I think when it comes to the villains, I have to give it to Arkham um, because the villains are more, way more compelling, even the smaller characters. I think they do a great job of that in Arkham Knight very well. Mark um, Hamill is even, Joker. Oh, yeah. that's There is no debate. That's that's just... I mean, don't get me wrong. I, 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 I love Yuri Bernthal and I love um, Tony Todd, whatever his name is. But <laughs> Mark Hamill... Mark Hamill and Kevin that Conroy, guy. baby. Kevin the way, Conroy. The way Mark Hamill's Joker was talking to to Jason. It's been six months already, Jason. He's hey, Geeky Cast, I know you're in this live. You want to join in? Like it's Sorry, crazy. Yeah. yeah, I think. No. Go ahead. They got some of the best voice acting out of both Mark Hamill and and Kevin Conroy in that game series. Hands down, and yeah, I agree. Hands down. Uh, now, Yuri did impress me in the. And I, I know who said they didn't play the second game. Come again? Who's, I got to buy a PS Five. I got. <laughs> uh, but I have to. You know, I think Yuri is an interesting conversation. Now, I'm not comparing him to Mark Hamill or uh, or Kevin Conroy because that's not even a debate. But uh, I think Spider-Man 2 does – it starts a conversation with Yuri. I think Yuri is definitely going to be – I don't know. I wouldn't say he's the Kevin Conroy yet because you you have other voice actors, like the guy from uh, – you have, like, Barnes from the animated series from the 90s, and then you got uh, uh, the spectacular Spider-Man. I can't – his name is escaping me right now, but, um, yeah. Uh, vengeance. I am the knight. <laughs> yeah. I, think I suppose so. that creates a bias too. Just, just mean, for my not, love. <laughs> it's not really bias. I mean, yes, you can say it's bias, but there's another aspect you can look. You like I think when it comes to fighting wise, the two characters, Spider Man solo is Batman. But when it, we look at everything else with the story-wise, game quality, uh, combat, you know, now combat is a different conversation, even though I do enjoy the Arkham Knight a little bit more because it's more fun and interesting. Um, Spider-Man still ev- is an evolution to that. So, you know, I... Mm, I don't and we're know. only two games deep, too. We're only two games deep in the Spider-Man series while mm-hmm. Arkham had technically four games, even though, like, Origins isn't Arkham is the blueprint. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, it's 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 like Alabasta for One Piece. If okay, if the Arkham games are blueprint, what's the Spider-Man then? 
Spider Man is is the copyright. <laughs> like Arkham, so like Arkham Origins, the blueprint. Arkham City, right? The prototype. Arkham Knight is, is what we what we were like 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 advertising. We were gonna push to market. Marvel yeah. Spider Man One is copyright. Spider Man Two. I could do another Spider-Man analogy too. Spider-Man. Like uh, the Arkham, the Arkham verse would be like Einstein talking about time, and then fucking Spider Man PS Five is Stephen Hawking talking about time. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. Yeah, fucking Isaac Newton theory, uh, 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 fucking gravity, and then theory of relativity. Einstein, boom. So you would say maybe Arkham verse is more Tupac and Biggie Spider Man verse. Nah, I'd say that Arkham. Uh, is more uh, nah. Nah. I'd say Arkham is, Arkham is Tupac, while Spider Man is like E. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but J Cole for it, like 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 taking over the game, really really, good, but doesn't get the respect it deserves. For real. Yeah. Well, I love both you. Guys I'm about to go play Arkham right <laughs> now, actually. <laughs> You ask also, me, uh, in terms of character and anything else, slams both of them. Fredo slams who? Spider Man, Batman? Yeah. I'm a holler chill. Say what? I'm a, I'm a holler chill. I'm going to go play Arkham. <laughs> oh, I got you. I'm a beast more. Yeah. But not. Kratos. Like... <laughs> in terms of writing, Kratos is a great character. I mean, compare. That's like I was saying earlier with Batman and Spider Man. It's hard to really compare the two because it's night and day. And if you're comparing Batman and Spider Man to Kratos, that's a whole. That's like comparing. I don't know, like Spider Man to. Now I'm not saying Superman and Kratos is a. Mm, I don't know. You know, take somebody in like DC or Marvel that's murked a lot of people and then became a superhero. Yeah. Well, that would be uh. I would say Lobo, to be honest with you. <laughs> Lobo. Lobo maybe. when he wanted to become a Justice League member? I think he did at one point. I think yeah. He You're going to need Lobo. That shit's hilarious to me. I want you to know. Lobo is genuinely one of the funniest niggas ever. I love Lobo. I can't. Uh, hopefully, if they are serious about doing a film for him and that new James kind of stuff, um, hopefully they, they do some service. Damn, because he definitely needs it. Even though I loved him, and I do like him in the animated series, the uh, Justice League stuff. Or was it? What Superman film he shows up? I can't. I, I he, can shows up, he shows up in the Justice League for show a bunch of times. Oh, that, but also he was in that Superman animated film. Uh, I think it was All Star, I believe. I think. I think it was All Star. Not really sure. Now I would love to see Lobo in the, the, the Superman Legacy film. That would be interesting. What I find crazy is that Superman got sent thirty thousand years into the future. Everybody thought he died, and then he comes back, and Lobo's like, "Man, y'all some bitch ass people for real. Y'all want this nigga over me?" I was like, "Yo, that's crazy." <laughs> I was like, y'all really want this new movie? This trash can over me for real. This is crazy. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whenever he I have out the way, though, he's just like, yeah, I'll slip in there. Yeah. Man. Man. I ain't gonna lie. But, uh, bro, who's one of your favorite, like, one of your favorite video game characters? Mmm. I'm going to have to say Kratos, to be honest with you. That is, I told you mine. That is Kratos. Kratos is my favorite video game character. I mean, I mean Kratos currently is the one um, I grew up on uh, Sly and Jax. Um, but yeah, uh, J- Sly and Jax. Oh, Crash Cinema. Bandicoot. Cinema, so, Cinema's in, inner voice sounds like Airy. <laughs> that's, what his, that's what his brain sounds like when he's just monologuing. Like he'll be like, he'll be like, 
I have came for the blood of Olympus, Zeus. And then and then, and then, and then I just go back to normal. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, I aggravate the piss out of people when I be doing that. I'd be either doing Kratos or someone else like that. Sometimes Batman. I, I can, yeah. <laughs> I should make a, do a video just doing that, messing around. But. Peter is much stronger in this game. Peter dog walks Batman. If you give Batman prep time, you give Peter prep, and he's going to have something for him, not going to lie, facts. Only base Peter is implied to be weaker than he, what he was in the first game. Okay. Peter wasn't even weak in the first game, though. He literally took on a Sinister Six with broken ribs and whatnot. He got a cannon, Batman, he got a cannon event coming where he died. That's why he's getting weak. Story. I don't. Okay, so if they're going for the ultimate Spider-Man angle, which would be interesting, but I truly think the way they're setting it up, because if you play some of the side stories in the game, they're setting up MJ and Peter to, you know, get married and all that, and they're also setting up Cindy Moon and whatnot. So I think it'd probably be either. The only way you're going to end the story with Peter is either he's unalived or he's like, like truly retired, like he doesn't return, kind of like they did with the Ultimate Spider-Man. Mm. You think we get into God of War Six? Oh yeah, yeah, because uh, that that game made money. No, I mean, Spider-Man now did that, but still, it's still a bit good. Man, I ain't gonna lie. Spider-Man, Spider-Man tough. Can't, can't combat Spider-Man. You really can't. He's like the greatest superhero ever or some shit like that. But like, I'll say, I'll say one thing for sure. Hmm. Kratos been here for like 15 years. They definitely gonna keep him around for like fifteen more. Well, work. Kratos, they, uh, Kratos be around longer than any of us. Uh, man, all the characters that we're talking about: Batman, Spider Man, Kratos. If not, are you talking about like story, like fighting wise, or are you just talking about just you know legacy wise? Oh, in terms of the video game, yeah. since it's been out, in terms of how long the legacy lasts. Yeah. Can y'all hear me or no? Yeah, you just sound like you got a phone on your thing. I'm using AirPods, so they have, the audio is gonna be horrible. Uh, yeah, then this audio is about to be horrible. But definitely, Peter is just in Marvel Spider-Man Two is just much more powerful. Are we talking about games or we're we talking about who's powerful? Both. Oh. Both? Yeah. Separate conversation. Definitely. Like both. All right. If we're talking about just games, Spider-Man, in my opinion, is just a much better game than the Arkham franchise. I think they're both phenomenal, but I just think after Marvel Spider-Man 2, I think Spider-Man is definitely better than the Arkham series. Yeah. Um, do you mind, uh, I'm not trying to mute you, but can, like, when you talk, just you can unmute, but if, you know, if you're not, you know, so we, so we can hear everyone. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. All right. But um, I ha have to say that I was thinking about it right now. I think when it comes to the side stories and the, like the side stuff, I think Batman takes that completely. Cause you know, don't get me wrong. I love some of the side stuff in the recent Spider-Man game, but Batman's always had the great start stories. Now, when I say that, I'm really talking about Arkham Knight, though. But because Arkham City and Asylum really, I mean, Asylum did have a good couple side stories in the DLC. Not Asylum, a city had a great stories in Asylum, but it's Arkham Knight is really the one you, you use. Also, Arkham Origins as well. But I think, you know. Arkham Knight definitely just takes it when it comes to side stories and whatnot. Like we were talking about earlier with the villains. Like the villains are way, I th think, more compelling. Now, granted, I think Doc Ock is good, uh, Green Goblin, Harry's Venom, and all. But 
I mean, there's way more variety for Batman, even though he doesn't... I don't know. It's interesting. But at least with the... Yeah, I, I kind of... Oh, hold on. Not to cut you off, but I kind of do feel like a little bit some of the side missions did not feel like as important as others, and they felt a little minuscule when you see what's going on in the game. But I still personally like the side missions more in Marvel Spider-Man than I did in Arkham. But... I disagree on the villain part. I think the villains to me in Marvel Spider-Man were more compelling than the ones that we saw in Arkham Knight and Arkham City. But I do understand it's your opinion at the end of the day. Well, if you look at the villains in the, the Arkham verse or really Arkham, I mean, let, let's just use Arkham Knight because Arkham Knight is the best example. Um, like all the, the villains that show up, like Professor Pig, uh, Man Bat, uh, like those are Firefly, like they give those characters a backstory and com like they are very more compelling. Like that, that mission you have to go to the lab where man bat was created. I mean, the, the music in the background, everything about that, the story and how they told that, which really didn't have any connection whatsoever to the main story. Just the fact that it's just another villain that's in Gotham, but still it's, Way more compelling. Like, don't get me wrong. I think they're, the, the villains in the Spider-Man game are fantastic. But I don't feel anything for Electro or Scorpion. Now, I think they did a great job with Sandman. I think they finally are starting to do that. I think the second game is the perfect example. Uh, when I think they're starting to give more depth for these characters like Sandman, um, Mr. They did a wonderful, I love what they did with Mr. Negative. I think they did a way better job for Mr. Negative in the games than they did in the comics. But, um, hold on, I'm trying to ask somebody. Did, did it go? No? Yeah, it did. I think it did. Okay, he's gone now. Anyway, um, but yeah, but I see where you're coming from, but yeah, it's, I think it's, it's an interesting, I think a better comparison will have to be debated later on but but um personally i feel like i connected more with the villains for marvel spider-man than i did with arkham knight like i do like certain villains in the arkham knight game but certain villains for me fell apart and i like the marvel spider-man villains a little bit more like craven venom Shocker, he was cool, but I can understand why some people might not see him as a Capellan villain. I like uh, Scorpion. Mr. Negative was done phenomenal. Dark Doc Ock story was pretty good, and I just thought they were much more compelling than the characters that we saw in Arkham Knight. But I understand where you're coming from, because I think both Arkham Knight and Marvel Spider-Man 2 had phenomenal villains. And I can see why certain people would lean towards Arkham Knight having the better villains. But in my personal opinion, I thought Marvel Spider-Man 2 had the better villains. Especially with characters like Venom and Kraven. They were massive standouts for me. And I thought they were some of the best villains in gaming we've seen. But I can understand why you think the Arkham villains are better than the Marvel Spider-Man villains. Because some villains in Marvel Spider-Man do fall apart a little bit. But I can understand where you're coming from. Now, when I say villains, I'm not talking about the main villains. I'm only specifically talking about the side villains. When it comes to the main oh. villains, the main villains, I give it the Spider-Man all day. Like Doc, I mean, let alone Mr. Negative and Doc Ock. Um, I will not speak to Doc Ock. I love what he did in the first game. I think they're going to really dive deeper into Doc Ock and what he's going to bring to the table in the third game because they're setting that up as well. But, like, perfect example, Mr. Negative. Like, what they did with Mr. Negative is just, I truly love what they did with Mr. Negative and how there, there's, a, uh, there's a great arc with him and, you know, and the connection between Miles and his, his actions, how it affected others like Miles. And, you know, it's, I love what they did with Mr. Negative. Also, Venom as well. Um, I love the Harry spin. I mean, we all, the only thing I would say, it was just as predictable as it was for the Arkham Knight stuff, but it's still, it, I, I, they did it way 10 times better than uh, the Arkham Knight reveal, for sure. Even though we all predicted that Harry was going to be Venom. I mean, just the way they were setting it up. But they delivered a million times better in the Spider-Man game than they did in Arkham Knight. Um, but also, you know, I think they did a great job with Sandman, and only if you defeat it. And uh, who else was in that? Um, I did feel like they did drop the ball a little bit with uh, Rafe, a little bit. 
Uh, I think I was hoping for a little bit more compelling. Uh, mm, definitely. What? But I feel like, because, oh, hold on, not to cut you off, but I feel like they didn't do much with her because it was more like a side mission than like something in the main story. And I think that was one of my issues with Marvel Spider-Man 2 was that I feel like certain villains did not get to do just, did not get done justice mainly because they were getting overshadowed by the main story and certain like side missions or mini, like mini fights got very overshadowed because of the main story, but I do feel like that certain characters did get done justice. I would have liked to see more from Wraith, kind of disappointed that we didn't really get to see much from her outside of the whole, like, Carnage, them setting up Carnage mission, I forgot what it was called, but outside of that, which we did, definitely wish we got to see more from her, but outside of that, I couldn't really be disappointed with any of the other, like, side mini bosses, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I'm wondering if they're going to do a DLC. Um, I know that was kind of not kind of debunked or confirmed yet because, you know, I do wish they would tell us if there's going to be a DLC or not, but they don't have to. But I think if they were to do a DLC, I think the carnage angle with Yuri, um, Yuri and as Rafe would be interesting because her her turn into Rafe happened in the DLC. So if they keep it in a DLC, story, then I would love to, maybe that could work. But uh, yeah. Um, but, you know, also they mentioned in the game, which is kind of kind of cool where they're like, Rafe was telling Spider-Man, like, I have to track down um, Cletus again. It might take a week, might take a month, it might take years, you know? So it's kind of like leaving it open open they're open the door for anything it could anything could happen but definitely but i feel like the main reason why she didn't feel as impactful as Melon because she got overshadowed easily by carnage which i don't think was the right move putting her in a dlc with carnage was clearly not the right move i think she should have had her own dlc to expand the character a little bit more but outside of that i wouldn't say she was a terrible character but she did her justice and she did what she needed for that type of mission but I was hoping for a little bit more since they were kind of hyping her up in the trails a little bit but I do think there will definitely be a DLC for Rafe especially with how big the game has been they're definitely gonna do a DLC well I'm honestly surprised with um, the fact that she's actually a part of the you know the, the the gameplay itself, you know, free roaming like with Miles and how he pops up sometimes. Now she pops up. I have to say though, I'll give credit to Spider Man though, is that with Spider Man two, they make it feel like it's like a Spider Man family. You know, he has like kind of like Batman with Robin and Jason Todd and Batgirl. They really don't do that in the Batman games, but they do it very well in the Spider Man games. Now, I don't want to take that away from the Batman games because there's a lot of like. Hey, yo, what, what's up, Mike Hood? What we we, we talking about? Um, yeah, I think I don't know if it's more of the 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 fact that they were limited to what they could do with the PlayStation stuff and the platforms, but um, back because the you know the Arkham has like Xbox and the PSC, PC, whatever. I don't know why I call it the, call it the PC. Anyway, because I remember when Arkham Knight came out. There was that big issue with it glitching really bad when it first released for the P the PC, which uh, I think they never really got it resolved. I think they did eventually patch it up, but it's still kind of glitchy from what I understand. Which also, by the way, people don't know this. Um, the the Batman, the Robert Pattinson suit is in Arkham Knight for the PC version. Um, they are going to release it on... All the, all the other platforms when they release it on Switch, which I believe is in oh. December. I, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that the patents and suit was going to be in Arkham Knight. It just it just came out today. It's kind of the way they kind of came out with it was a, it was a leak, but now it's like confirmed. But oh, because I didn't see anything about like the patents and suit being in the Arkham games, but maybe it's good. Who knows? It's a recent update because they're they're taking the um, the Arkham trilogy and putting it into because they're li releasing it on the Switch. I'm sorry, there's like noise in the background. I don't know what's going on behind there. Anyway, 
But yeah, that's you know, for anyone that doesn't know. I'm at, I think you can get it now on Epic Games if you have a PC. But besides that, yeah. So. Um. But yeah, definitely. At first, I thought this was just talking about like strength, but you know, it was a good conversation. I have to go real quick because my phone's about to die. But thank you, man. It was a phenomenal conversation. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming on. You're welcome. All right. All right. Um, I leave this, or do you kick me? I uh, I think you can leave it, but I I, I got you on. All right. I think I could. Okay. There you go. All right. Come on now. Yes. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna wrap it up here, guys. Um, now. I know I saw some stuff in the chat. Um, no, this isn't a spoiler discussion discussing Spider-Man 2. It just so happened to be part of the conversation. But um, the full spoiler discussion will be tomorrow, Friday night. Um, we're going to have tons of people on the live stream. I already got a lot of messages and whatnot, and people want to be a part of that. So that's happening tomorrow night, Friday night. Um, now, depending on your time zone, I'm from the East Coast, so I'll probably be doing it around 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. So for the West Coast or the Middle East of the country or whatnot, whatever time zone that is. But on the East Coast, I'll be having a live stream probably around 8.30 or 8 o'clock. And we're going to get into the spoiler discussion about Marvel Spider-Man 2, and we're going to have fun with that. So um, follow me. Keep up to date. Um, I'm going to update y'all tomorrow about a little bit more about the live stream but yeah but thank you to everyone that joined the live today i know this was very last minute i just wanted to have this conversation because i've been ha seeing this whole debate on twitter aka x but i'm gonna call it twitter anyway i don't care what elon musk says but <laughs> anyway um thank you for watching follow for more and you know stay tuned for the live stream tomorrow for the spoiler discussion for marvel spider-man 2 but thank you for watching, and again, follow for more.